So, uh, I started this question yesterday. I read it and I was thinking about it. I couldn't do it yesterday, so I, but I just I did it just now. And I don't know how I did it, but I'm going to try my best to explain it. So, smallest sufficient team. Given a list of required skills, and there's up to 16 skills, it says here. And these skills could be uh, strings. You have algorithms, Marla, Java, so on. And you also have a list, a vector or vector of strings. Each index in this vector represents a person. And at this index, we have a list of skills that this person has. Now, the, the question asks, return a list of people, of unique people, that represent the smallest possible team that you could have that can cover all the skills. It sounds simple enough, but implementation is pretty complicated. So you have up to 16 different skills, and you have up to 60 people. So for example, Java, Node.js, React, uh, what, what people do you need to be able to cover all these skills out of these people here with these skills? Well, I'm going to go with the Node.js, React.js guy. This guy knows two. Okay, that means I covered this part of the array. And then I just need Java left, so I'm going to pick this guy. So then we have zero, two, and that's what I return. I haven't even thought about this yet. What, what is the brute force? Well, brute force would be to try every possible combination of people and see if that covers all the required skills. But how many people are there? There are 60 people. So if I do every possible combination of people, that's two to the power of 60. Because I can, if you think about the binary, right? If you have 60 bits and then you just start from zero all the way up to go all the way up to one bit shifted um, 60 to, to the left, that will cover all possible combinations. But what is one bit shifted 60 to the left? Well, that's 2 power of 60 is uh, way too big. It's like 10 to the power of 18. But the required number of skills is 16. And so 2 to the power of 16 is 65536. Which is definitely uh, doable in linear time. So how do we take advantage of the, that the skills are quite low? Uh, well, that's a good question. Let me think. How do I explain this? It's kind of like if you if you've done the knapsack problem before, that might make it easier to understand. So the knapsack problem is like we have a bunch of coins, and we want to find out what's the minimum number of coins to use given that these are the denominations of the coins that we can use we have infinite number of each of these coin types what's the minimum number of coins we can use to get some target like 60. it's like a similar problem so what we do is we have a dp and we're like all right for 60 what's the minimum number of um coins and that will but that will be equal to dp of 60 minus c where C is in one, two, three, four. So this is just basically asking if I add a one, that means I need to get 59. What's the minimum number of coins to use to get 59? Well, that would be something. And then I do that for all of these, get the min out of all of those. And that will be the answer. So it's kind of written like this, it's kind of recursive, but you can also do it bottom up. This question is very similar, uh, except that it uses bit manipulation to represent these values here, four, three, two, one. So the idea here is like, you have skills. DP of skills, I want that to be equal to the min set of people, min set of people that can cover skills. Uh, so let's call this, so let's call it um, S, all skills in S. So this is the, the the sub problem and the, the transition is something like dp of s is equal to dp of s minus the skills minus the skills of person of person p or all p min uh, set size of uh, of this out of all p pool p that's that's essentially tr the transition. It's very simple. You can see the, the similarity with the, with the coin denomination problem. Okay, um, but what does this mean? S minus skills P. So out of this this set of skills S, what is this set of skills? Oh yeah, out, out of this set of skills S, we assume that we're going to add this particular person P. So that means we don't need the skills of P, of person P. So that's why we subtract the person P skills from this set, use the answer from here, and then add person P to it. So if we treat this as a set, 
then add person p. Now that will be the answer for dp of s. So that's pretty much the, the issue, the problem. The other part is the base case, which is very important. What is the base case? dp of a set of skills algorithm. So for this example, this would be equal to a set of people. It could be either person zero, or person one. So we could have either zero or one here. It doesn't matter. We know person zero by itself could make up the this set of skills. So how do I actually um, make sure that this is the case for all the people out there where you're given? We also have to make sure that this set, set of skills can be covered by person zero. So this has to be initialized to zero as well. And we also have to make sure that this set of skills can be covered by person zero as well. And we have to do that for all of these, all the combinations of skills for a particular person, for each person. That's, that's the base case. Yeah. So it's like to write it formally, maybe the skills of person P Okay, skills of person P, all combinations of skills P is equal to person P. All right, so how do we implement this? Like, for example, we're using, we're indexing into this DPS, which is a, is a set. That's not very nice because, I mean, we could probably use like an unordered, no, an ordered map and then use the set as the key. That's not very pretty. We want to use bit set because there's only up to 16 skills and int has 32 bits in it. We could just have a one in the position of a skill and that would only take up half of an int at the most. So we could just um, represent a set of skills by an integer. Yeah, that's the idea. So let's, um, let's, let's give this a go. How do we do this? Well, um, first, first of all, let's initialize everything. So we have how many combinations? We actually have uh, one bit shifted uh, n skills many combinations of people. Does that make sense? Because let's say you have three ones here and you have three skills. So you have uh, three skills a, b, and c. This bit set here of three ones represent a set of all possible skills. If I bit shift one, three places to the left, I get eight because there are eight possible combinations. So there's zero, 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 there's zero, zero, one, there's one, zero, so on and so forth, until I get one, 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 which which value is seven in decimal. There's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, there's eight of those. So there's eight different possible combinations. So let's initialize n skills to be equal to uh, rec skills plus size. Then I could say some DP, which has to be a vector of vectors of ints to be this size, right? Because the DP stores a set of people for a particular set of skills. Right, and then let's initialize um, this DP base using the base case. So we have to go through all combinations of the skills of a particular person. It would be nice if we could map a particular skill to a particular mask. For example, if I just have a set of skill B, then the mask would be 0, 1, 0 in this case. If I want the set of skills, if I just want A, then it would just be 1, 0 or something like that. Same idea, we want to map, have an ordered uh, map, and it'll be from a string to an int, uh, called a skill mask. So I can go through all the skills, set the skill mask of required skills at i to be equal to, now to create the mask, it's just a bit shift, like that. Now, let's initialize the dp. So I have to go through all the people, uh, so people.size, calculate what the skill mask of this person is. So let's call it int skills. Start it off at zero, then go through each of this person's skills, and then accumulate the skills in this set by doing skills or equals to the person's skills. I have to grab the mask from this, like it comes from skill mask, like that. Once I have this person's skills, it'd be nice if I just save it somewhere for later use. A vector of ints, person's skills of size, people of size, and say, initialize it to zero, and then say, person's skills, person at i should be, should have, has this set of skills. Then I could go through all possible combinations of this person's skills and set the, and initialize the DP based on the base case. So to go through all possible combinations, an easy way is to go through all possible combinations regardless of whether there are, this person has the skills or not. And then check J less than, so all possible combinations would be a one bit shifted and skills. 
once I have that, I want to check if, if the set of skills J is covered by the person's skills. How do I do that? Well, J, if I bit shift J, so if I say if J and skills, if that is equal to J, that means this person skills covers all skills in J. So then I want to set the DP at this set of skills to be equal to a set, to be equal to a set with one person in it, and it's just this person. So now we've initialized the DP, we wanna go through all possible combinations according to the transition and do this. So we start at zero, all the way up to, up to two to the power of n skills. And then what do we do? So we need to go through, pointing to this, all all people. So that means I need a for loop. Uh, people dot size plus plus j. Now there is a possibility that this is a base case that we've already set this, and we know that it's the best possible answer because there's only one person in this set. If uh, dp at i is not empty, then continue, and uh, we need to keep track of the best person j to add on. So I could say int best j value and set that to be equal to zero by default. And I'm really looking for the min set size. I need to keep track of num. And let's set that to int max initially. So I'm going through all people. I need to check the size of dp at s minus skills p. So s minus skills p is, let's call it remaining skills. That's going to be the skills at j uh, minus um, the skills at of this person p. To, to do a subtraction, in, in, in bit man manipulation, you would have to do J and the, the person's skills of this person, which is J like that, and then flip that. Once I flipped it, that's the remaining skills. Now I think about it. We're essentially making parts in this bit string, but we're parts, parts of this in this sequence of bits that was initially one to be now a zero. And that all, all the zeros are now one. So if I bit, bitwise and that J, I'm essentially removing all positions all bit positions that were one in this integer. So that's like a set subtract. So that's the remaining skills. And then I could grab size of the set. I guess that's the most important part. Size of the set, let's call it tentative size. Tentative number is equal to dp at the remaining skill and grab the size of that. Now it could be the case that rem skills is empty. That means it was, it's not possible to get a rem, this combination of skills. So if tents number, so if it's not zero and tent number is less than the min number so far, I want to set min number to be equal to, to tent number and the best j to be equal to j, the record the best person. And then outside the for loop, I could um, set the dp at i to be equal to dp at, at the rem skills. But rem skills is j, the best j and bitwise and with the person's skills. Then I need to make sure that I add on the person that I chose, which is best J. So I push back best J. And then at the very end, I need to return, return DP at uh, where all skills are in the set. And that's given by one bit shifted and skills minus one. This should be skills. Uh, I need to put brackets around the bit operations for it to work properly. And I also need a semicolon, should be best J. This should be I. Oh, uh, this shouldn't be best J, this should be I. It should be the same as this. Okay, there we go. And give that a run. Okay, all right, so what's the time complexity? Time complexity is going to be 2 power 16 times the number of people, so 60. All right, thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe. That was a tough one. Um, but I'll see you next tomorrow, probably, hopefully.